Welcome to AQMD On The Air. I'm your host, William Sanchez. Today we have with us the Director of Environmental Health at LA County Department of Public Health. His 30-year career has included assignments in both the public and private sectors and has focused on the assessment and control of environmental health risks in local communities throughout California. He has served in regulatory positions with Los Angeles County and the State of California. During his first administration, Governor Jerry Brown appointed him as California's first Toxics Enforcement's Chief, and he subsequently served as Chief of Southern California Operations for Cal EPA, where he administered regulatory programs for enforcement and site cleanup until 1988. In the private sector, he has led the Los Angeles area consulting operations of three national firms and founded Polaris Group, LLC, where he advised a number of private and public organizations. His leadership in the environmental field has been formally recognized by the California Legislature, US EPA, and the California League of Conservation Voters. He also boasts of several professional appointments, among them the Board of Scientific Counselors, the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, the National Center for Environmental Health, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Children's Health Protection Advisory Committee, and the Office of Children's Health Protection. He is the former Director of Environmental Health and Safety for the Los Angeles Unified School District and currently serves as the Director of Environmental Health Services for the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. Mr. Belomo, thank you for joining us. Thank you for asking. Uh, before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about the priorities for your department in regards to air quality? Yes, I, I think there's really three. The first one um, relates to the fact that uh, we really want to do an effective job of supporting the work of AQMD. You know, the district is really a regulatory agency, but most of the decisions they make uh, are ultimately based on what's required to protect public health. So there's a natural fit in connection between our two agencies. I think that uh, what we'd really like to do is to provide that public health perspective for the decisions that AQMD is making. Now our second priority is really um, extending now that same sort of support but to local government. There are a number of planning agencies that work locally that make decisions and the connections between public health and those decisions are not as intuitive but nevertheless, those decisions do impact public health because they have a lot to do with uh, air pollution and how their siting decisions could in fact impact the public health from air pollution. The third priority is that in the environmental health field, uh, it, the science is always evolving. And um, we really like to be in a position where as that new um, science comes out and standards change or methods of assessment change, we really want to help to translate that in public health terms so that our partners at the local level can use the information and almost as important, members of the public who want to be engaged in the process can also benefit from that translation. And one of the things we've learned here as part of the recent studies is that uh, proximity matters. The closer one is to the source and whether their health is impacted. Could you tell us what's been done to deal with the near roadway effect and what has been done to address that issue? Yeah. And let me start out by saying I think that's a relatively new focus. And by that I mean um, AQMD has done tremendous work uh, through the past several decades in reducing pollution from criteria pollutants and achieving compliance with ambient air quality standards. But there's a different type of pollution that exists in the near field or in close proximity to pollution sources. So take the example of a freeway. If uh, one's home is located in close proximity to a freeway, they could be in an area where the attainment of the ambient air quality standards has been achieved, but within the shadow of that freeway, there are significant air pollution exposure that endangers the health of those residents. And it's that type of focus that I think AQMD has really undertaken in a very serious way, and that's where our partnership really has to extend because the assessments we have to make are complicated by the fact that many of the contaminants that exist in the near field, in close proximity to pollution sources, there, there really are no standards available. And so we have to resort to site-specific risk assessments to determine how significant those levels are and what can be done to address them. 
One of the things we've noticed is, and has raised our concern is uh, school sites and children, given the localized air impacts of freeways and highways. Why, why would the air quality have such an impact on the children there at the school sites? Well, there's a couple of basic reasons. I mean, children are young people, and their breathing rate and the amount of air they breathe in is, um, you know, in comparison to their body weight is relatively high compared to an adult. They're also at a formative stage in terms of the development of their lungs and other biological organs. And as a result, they're much more susceptible to the effects of air pollution exposure. So that's part one. Now, when you place a, a student in the school setting, that's very important too because a student does spend a, a large portion of their day at that school site. So it's very important that that school site is uh, in an area where the effects of air pollution have been minimized. Earlier you touched upon the different types of pollutants there are. Can you distinguish toxic air pollutants from the criteria air pollutants? And why are they of concern? Yeah. Well, I, again, I think nationally, uh, our attention since about the 30s and 40s has been on reducing regional levels of air pollutants in those five or six major categories, the ambient air quality standards the oxides of nitrogen, sulfur, dioxides, the um, ozone, ground level ozone, particulate matter. Um, those are very important and they are good indicators of how we're doing with regard to controlling regional sources of air pollution. But we want to contrast that now with what goes on when you're talking about being in close proximity to a local pollution source. And there we're talking about toxic air pollutants. Again, these are a class of compounds where standards in many instances don't exist and we have to resort to site-specific assessments to determine how significant the exposures are and what can be done to control them. Um, one of the primary um, emission sources we know is diesel particulate matter that accounts for over 80 percent of the toxic air cancer risk. What is being done to address diesel emissions? Right, well let me go back to the school setting for a moment because this is a significant problem for about 90 schools throughout the Los Angeles area that are sited within close proximity to a freeway source. There again, as you said, diesel particulate matter is a, a potentially significant exposure. And the studies in this area have been pretty clear that um, when you're sited close to a freeway, there is increased incidence and severity of various types of health effects. There's um, pulmonary effects, respiratory effects, uh, cardiovascular effects, as well as some forms of cancer that can be induced by exposure uh, to these contaminants. The good news is that as you move away from that source, so as we move further and further out from, say, the freeway center line, the pollution sharply reduces, and so does the accompanying risk. So if we can maintain an adequate buffer, in some instances, the the law and the guidelines actually specify 500 feet, but that's really a minimum distance. The scientific studies have shown that, that the effects of a freeway can be felt out perhaps even as far out as three times that distance, 1,500 feet. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the bad news is the exposure exists when you've got schools sited next to the freeway. The good news is that there are steps we can take if we can site schools further away. Now, I hate to run on this way, but I wanted to add that with regard to school exposures, there's very little we can do with those 90 existing school sites because they're already sited too close to a freeway. But, but this really has, this experience really has to inform our decisions as we go forward to site new school sites and other sensitive uses. We have to avoid placing them so close to freeways. And with regard to those school sites that are there, there are some things that can be done they're really related to reducing the volume of traffic on freeways because that will also contribute to reductions in the amount of pollution and the associated risk. We can also encourage uh, alternative forms of transportation, go to cleaner burning fuels, and these will all help to contribute to minimize that risk. Oftentimes people say we can set up uh, vegetative cover or we can enhance the uh, heating ventilation systems on the buildings at, in schools. And that's really sort of the last resort that we'd mm -hmm. like to do. We really have to, at some point, reduce pollution at its source. And so going toward cleaner fuels, I think, ultimately is going to provide relief for those schools and those many thousands of homes that are located too close to freeways. 
And it definitely impacts the surrounding homes, not just the children attending the school. Um, Mr. Noel, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your leadership in helping us to clean the air that we breathe. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you for watching AQMD on the Air. Visit us at cleanairconnections.org to learn how you can help us clean the air we breathe.